<laughs> wow, god damn it. Um, and we are now blessed that we have the inalienable right to glow, grow loads of weed. And we've gone into lockdown right at harvest time and people are hanging out doing their uh, meditation clipping. There's nothing else to do now. So enjoy every single part of the clip that you're doing. Um, it isn't summer anywhere near where our next guest is. He's all the way in the very, very north of the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, he's, no, um, he, he's no stranger to this show. Joe and I had a complete laugh. We all had a laugh with him when he first came to the show almost a year ago. It's just over a year ago he came to the Hotbox show live. He's been on it a number of times. Mark Emery's waiting in the wings now for an update from Toronto. And he um, has been in doors in Canada for about 14 days now but he tells me that it's normally you normally do that anyway because it's like minus outside so they're kind of used to being inside a lot. Mark Emery you in the house? We are used to being here inside more than you but this is day 16 for me and I haven't and I even had a few walks by myself in the first uh, eight or nine days but the last seven days solid I haven't gone out the apartment door. So yeah. um by the way, the cigarettes are a leading indicator of fatalities in Italy and Spain, that the smokers are dying at a much higher rate. Um, and so that is the public health explanation for banning the cigarettes. They don't want any contraindications out there if it can be avoided. Now, here's the other thing. Um, there is every crisis, governments try to concentrate power. And they're going to try and concentrate a lot of power during this crisis in areas of what they would call health, but it's really personal liberty, and what they would call uh, important communications, which we would call our phone and our computer, um, and things like what we're doing now. Uh, we're going to be in bad times. We're going to, you know, there's going to be food shortages, and there's going to be inflation. The governments are producing a lot of money to give us to sit at home and do nothing. That'll be a lot of cash chasing too few goods, especially food items, um, which we're you know, all going to continue to consume at at least the same rate, but it's going to be much more expensive. Food prices will probably be up 50% to double, 100% within about three to six months. Tell us a little about, bit about the background in Toronto at the moment. Is there an official lockdown? What is the government up to? Because um, I don't know about you, but I don't trust anybody like people like Trudeau on that side of the scale. You're absolutely right. It is a, 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 an open checkbook to clamp down on this ship much more than well, it needs to be. not only that, the difficulty is, too, is that the government here in Canada now is beginning to subsidize the media. Uh, all of it, print, you name it. And, of course, you can't help but think that the media is going to be beholden to whatever government in power is dispensing the large X. Right, uh, it's going to be a corrupt process. Uh, corruption in Canada is different from South Africa um, in that it's probably sleazier and more concealed and justified by the use of some social good. Right, everything is justified by its, you know, keeping jobs, keeping journalists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but really, it's going to be pretty bad for journalism. It's going to be very because who's buying advertising? Anybody thinking of buying a car this week? I don't think so. Right, I mean. It's, it's a, I've never seen this in my lifetime. I heard stories about the Depression. I certainly fear we're going to see one. So, um, because all these people unemployed and still eating and still needing to live and have a roof over their heads, all this government cash that's being printed to give out to people so we can, quote, survive, is going to create very bad conditions. It's not like I'm a complete Darwinist, but <laughs> sometimes, we, we at some point, we may have to face... The fact that a lot of people are going to die so the rest of us can live because we need to produce food, fuel, and all the things that make all these things come together. You know, I don't think people are going to be buying so much crap anymore because that's going to seem like, hmm, we nearly died and had mass deaths. I don't think I need this piece of shit. I think there's going to be a lot more of that <laughs> right. after this. I think right. people are going to be a little more conscious, a little more grateful, a little less needy and grabby. But we've got to get through a period of possible looting, militaries on the street. You know, in Canada, I trust the military, and overall, I even trust the cops for the most part. But I don't know if you can say that in a lot of Asia, Africa, and you know, the Caribbean, and uh, Latin America, that people don't trust the cops there, and they don't necessarily trust the military. Um, so, and when people are hungry, 
there are a limited number of responses for poor people. So I think there's going to be a lot of very big revelations coming for us in the next little while. So you, you heard our last um, uh, our last guest talk about the cannabis industry in Vegas. Were you on the? You, you were listening to the previous guest here, Bill, and he was saying yeah. that it's 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 basically an essential item by law. So he's growing and he's doing his thing, and that must be really weird to you, my friend, because you've had like thirty jails and fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines, and now it's an yeah. essential thing. 39 prisons and jails. And here's the thing, I'm still paying the fine for my <laughs> store I got busted for four years ago. But, and I still owe a lot, and I'm paying a fortune, yet my, the same industry is declared an essential service during a state of emergency. <laughs> but, okay, so that is as it is. There's a, certainly a lot of irony there. And some people said, you know, there's good and there's bad in what you said. It's The bad is the injustice that occurred to you, but the good is that it's an essential service in a state of emergency. Um, and I gotta figure the cops are very much prioritized. I don't think there'll be a lot of hot bus going on, um, which we still have in Canada, but I don't think we're gonna see much. I saw the policeman, the last time I went to the grocery store about eight days ago, there was a policeman inside. I said, has there been disputes? He said, sometimes. He said, embarrassingly, over toilet paper. Um, he said, so, you know, one of us just shows up here, we walk around and just remind people to try and keep orderly and stuff, right? Well, in a big city like Toronto, that's not a particularly unusual thing. You know, they often have to get, you know, move homeless people along who take up residence in places that they're not supposed to. And, you know, we live in an old environment here, so, you know, this is, people want to be indoors. So, you know, it's not, not a big deal. If the military were on the street, I would definitely say that we can't allow looting. Because looting and, and all crime is contagious. If certain people are seen to be getting away with looting, it will immediately flash across entire jurisdictions to affect millions of people. So I get it if the military is just there to stay in their vehicles, to stay on the street, to just look after property, encourage you know proper behavior, and then I don't use it to settle political or cultural scores. <laughs> Right. right, because there'll be that temptation, because they're going to suspend liberty to some degree, and we don't really have any say about it. I mean, what do we say? We're at home watching the news. We're not making the news. Everyone's in their apartment that's trying a, to avoid you know, this contagion. That's a very that the numbers start to go downward. That's a very good point you make. Yeah, we uh, the, the revolution will be te televised, and we're sitting at home watching it. It's quite bizarre what how easy it was for them well, if that was if that was their ulterior motive. Or, the big question is: Is it going to be a devolution, or evolution, or a revolution? We've got three options: we can go backwards, we can evolve into a superior form, or we can have a revolution where we destroy all our institutions and put seven and a half billion people at risk of poverty and starvation. Wow! Imagine that. Um, are you still no, in? Don't. No, don't. Are you still um, on the, on as uh, can I say, on the periphery of the cannabis industry? Are you still sort of? Oh, I'm very. I'm affiliated with people who are delivering into these trying times, um, and it can be done. The thing is, the cannabis industry or the cannabis services can adapt, and so currently we have many delivery services operating in the great GTA, and it needs. It's just one person at each location. One person has the inventory. One person does the administration. The other person picks it up, drops it off, hands it at two meters length. You can even leave it on the front doorstep and they'll leave an envelope. Uh, you never have to see anybody, but it's getting to everybody in the GTA. Canada is awash in cannabis. Uh, the prices are going to be are low and they're going lower because a lot of people won't be able to afford cannabis. That's going to be a luxury. Food is going to become much more expensive. And if we can't go outside, um, you know, you, if you live in Toronto, yeah, delivery services are here. But most of rural Canada is not going to have some guy driving it to your door. So you could get it by mail, and that's pretty efficient. So, you know, Canadians will still get cannabis if they can afford it. And that's going to be the big question, is what is money worth and what will it buy? And, and, uh, and you know, again, governments are going to try and use this to concentrate power. So there will be more talk about eliminating cash and more talk about electronic credits, credits, and electronic money, um, which, you know, for a guy like me, I, that's like seeing 
in like Soylent Green where I start playing Beethoven's Pastoral and putting myself to sleep permanently because I don't want to live in a world without cash. I've never, I've had a cash business all my life. I'm not a credit guy. I'm not going to have a good score. I'm not going to ever be considered a desirable citizen under those circumstances, right? So that's well, when it's time for let this new generation deal with their dystopia. Um, and let me move on. <laughs> you know? Well, um, you, you say that the guys on my right, on my side here, no, the other side there, the guys that are in those boxes up here, they're all cat. They're all clipping by all those. It felt like Tinder without the sex. <laughs> well, all the guys that you see on the screen from the crew from the hot box, we're all cash people as well. We we deal in cash all of our lives. Cash is king around all of our lives forever. So it it is a weird transition to be dealing with them. Um, you know, credit cards and stuff, and people doing EFTs and never knows what. It's like, um, it's really fucking hectic to actually launder this stuff, you know. It's all gone, in, it's all gone electronic. There's, um, there's talk, Mark, in South Africa of um, us being tracked as either pre or post or current COVID um, uh, status, whether you've had it or you're getting it or you've got it, and we will be tracked by phone. And uh, a lot of well, people. Well, a lot of this depends on immunity. If you get it, if you're one of the eighty percent that have no symptoms or minor symptoms, I've never really met anybody that said, "Oh, it was just a cough for a half a day," and I, I had it. Right? I'd be curious to know why it has no manifestations to eighty percent of people, but twenty percent, you know, are in the critical care. You know, definitely having a bad time, uh, not happy type of thing. Right? Well, twenty percent is a pretty high percentage. Um, but sooner or later, the people need to find out if they're immune, and they've got to go back out to work. I mean, if they don't have to worry about it, as soon as you've gotten through it, you got to go back to work, right? Because people have to start producing as soon as possible. So the only people that should be quarantined are the people that have never had it, obviously, who are vulnerable. I would suggest if you feel vulnerable, then quarantine yourself. But sooner or later, the world is going to have to return, and it's going to have to be done by people who gathered immunity through vaccination, through having survived it, through whatever. So, so you know, we live in post-apocalyptic times, almost. Um, have you, um, uh, you, you don't think, have you had any of the virus? Have you had the symptoms of it? Have you been, have you just been generally... The first day, I've had no symptoms. I had, uh, But I didn't have COVID symptoms. I just had, I don't know how I got it. I said, I've been indoors for 16 days. As far as I know, I hadn't touched or gone near anybody or anything, but that's, you know, someone's delusion. But in the last seven days, I've been indoors, because about seven days ago, my nose started running like a tap. But that lasted two or three days, became a cough. But it wasn't a dry cough. It was a phlegmy cough. Oh, I see. So okay. that wasn't a symptom either. All right. Okay. And then my chest was tender for a day from the coughing. But then the day after that, that stopped. And then I harked up a lot of stuff yesterday and the day before. And to me, those are all normal progressions. In fact, normally, when I went, I went to Colombia and Chile last August and September, and I picked up a terrible cold flu in both places and felt much worse for three weeks last August and three weeks last September. <clears throat> so this only had um, the added element of paranoia, like, do I have COVID, right? And, you know, I'm, I didn't want to bother getting tested because, I, you know, I'm not in enough discomfort to justify anybody's time. I'm eating good foods only, salads, fruits, uh, you know, like eating well, um, keeping my mind agile, doing crosswords, thinking things. I only just started smoking pot today, though. It's probably the first day of bong hits for a couple of weeks.